So we're the owners, and welcome to a video on adjectives and adjectival agreement, particularly useful for GCSE. So this video is going to cover what is adjectival agreement in English, the incorrect method to do it in Latin, which is trying to match the endings, the correct method, which is making sure that adjectives and their nouns match in case, number and gender, a little bit about pronominal adjectives, and then finally, a very small amount about nominalized adjectives. So, adjectival agreement is the process of matching an adjective to the noun that it describes. In English, we do this purely by placement. In the sentence, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, we know that quick and brown must describe fox because they come directly before it. In another example, the sentence, the penguin was terrifying and the children were too slow. We know that terrifying must describe penguin because it's linked by the verb to be. Latin, oddly enough, does not do this. So let's start by tidying up about nouns. Nouns are naming words and they come in declensions. The main three declensions, we have first declension words, which are almost all feminine. These are words like puel, a. Second declension words, which are masculine words like servus and neuter words like bellum. And finally, third declension words, where the masculine and feminine shares one set of endings, words like rex or narwis or herbs, etc. And third declension, neuter words like caput. All nouns stay in their declension. They don't magically change between. Adjectives are slightly different. The first major group of adjectives are called 212 or Kerberos type adjectives because they have three heads. These adjectives share endings with servus, puella, and bellum. One might notice if we look at the masculine here, so bonus, bonne, bonum, boni, bono, bono is identical to servus, sewe, sewum, sewe, sewo. Same for puella, puella, puellam, puella, 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 and bellum, 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 belly, bello, bello. So these adjectives are called Kerberos type because they have three different endings. So the simplest form of adjectival agreement is when both the noun and the adjective it comes from the first or second declension, i.e. Kerberos type with a first or second declension noun. As a result, they often have the same endings because they use the same set of endings. So dominus is described by bonus, servus by malos, um, amici by benigni, uh, ma donum by magnum, puellae by miserae, anculae by irratae, concilia by noa. Notice here that with magnum and noa, they are in front of the words that they describe. This is why in Latin you simply cannot use placement in the sentence in order to work out adjectival agreement. Sometimes, it, sometimes it's in front, sometimes it's behind, and poetry does weird things anyway. The next major type of adjectives in Latin are called 3-3 three, three, or Janus type endings because Janus, the god of doorways, had two heads, which kind of matches the fact that the Janus type adjectives have two sets of endings. These are slightly more different than rex and capitis. This is most notable in the ablative singular, where it really should be an e, but in the, for the adjectives it's an i. And for the neuter plural, where you'd expect just an a, like capita, but instead you get capitia. Um, third declension has lots of exceptions. So, if you are using a noun and an adjective that are both from the third declension, that is to say Janus type adjective with a third declension noun, they often, but not always, have the same set of endings. Regis is described by sapientis and carnem by ingentem, but canis and felix don't look the same even though they are. Milites gets described by fortes and hostem by crudelem. But in this last sentence here, flumen doesn't look anything like facile, but they are the same set of endings. Thus, an observant listener will have worked out that you can't always just hope that the endings are the same in order to work out adjectival agreement. Instead, Latin works by making sure that the adjective agrees with, i.e. matches, the noun that they describe in case, in number, and in gender. Let's do this as a practical example. The first thing you're going to need to do is identify the case, the number, and the gender of your noun. So a random sentence here, the friend of the girls enters the temple. Amicus is nominative, 
he's masculine and he's singular. The puellarum are genitive, plural and feminine, and the templum in the sentence must be accusative, singular and neuter. If we wanted to describe every noun in that sentence with the adjective bonus, which means good, which would be a bit of an odd sentence, but moving on, we would then need to make sure that each adjective has the same case, the same number and the same gender as the noun that it describes. Amicus, as we know, nominative, singular, masculine. If you apply that by looking at the tables for bonus, you end up with just bonus. They happen to have the same. If we do the same for puellarum, which is, as I say, gender plural feminine, we end up with bonarum. Templum happens to therefore end up with bonum for the same reason. This is how that simplest form of adjectival agreement actually works. Those endings happen to look identical. But what's actually happening is that they have the same case, the same number, and the same gender. If we do the same thing, but now we've got some third declension nouns, so the sentence, the sisters, the sorores, of the regis, of the king, they navigant, they sail, trans maria, across the seas. Well, if we want to use that same adjective bonus to describe those sentences, we now need to apply the same logic. Sorores is nominative plural feminine, and that's bon i. If you look at our table, regis, genitive singular masculine, or the genitive singular masculine version of bonus is bon e, and maria, which is accusative plural neuter, goes to bon a. This is why the endings don't look like they match, that is to say they're not identical, but in reality, both the adjective and the noun that it describes have the same case, the same number, and the same gender. Now you can see an opportunity to test yourself to see if you understand the topic. We've got here four different sentences with some Kerberos type adjectives that are using that bonus, bonar, bonum set of endings. What word does bonas describe in sentence one? What word does altum describe in sentence two, etc.? Pause the video here, have a go. Three, two, one. If you didn't, or you were struggling, here's a bit of help. Here's the sentence without the adjective added in. You might now be able to work out what bonas must describe. Three, two, one. Okay. Bonas is accusative plural feminine, as we can see in our table. The only thing in that sentence which is accusative plural feminine is the word epistulas. They happen to have the same ending. That makes life easy. Altum could be a couple of things. It's either neuter nominative, vocative, or accusative, or accusative, both of them singular. In that sentence, there's only one thing that could be accusative singular, and that would be the word montem. Irati and longis, well, irati could be plural masculine nominative to describe you winners, and longis could be a, a ablative plural masculine to describe gladiis, and in the last sentence, we have stultus, which must be uh, nominative plural, singular masculine to describe puer, and magnum must describe corpus. Notice in particular for that last sentence, stultus, if you were applying purely the match the ending type logic, you might think that it describes corpus because they have the same ending. But in reality, corpus is a third declension neuter word like caput. So actually, it's just accusative singular here. Puer, which is a slightly irregular second declension word like weir or agar or magister, is actually our nominative singular. So if you were just trying to match the endings here, you would almost certainly have got this last one wrong. Sometimes, as we might note for irati, an I ending could be several different things in my table. But the only thing that it could reasonably be describing in this sentence is you winners. Let's try again. Same process, this time with the Janus type adjectives, that is to say third declension type adjectives. Three, two, one. OK, here's a bit of help if you were struggling with that. Here's the sentences without those third declension type adjectives in there. Again, have a pause, see if you can test yourself. Three, two, one. So, dewitis could be genitive singular feminine, and that would be the only thing in this sentence that would make sense. So it must describe the mattress, which is also 
third declension, so they have the same ending by fluke. Ferrochem can only be describing iram in that sentence because they both are accusative, singular, and as it so happens, feminine for iram. The, the sailor terrified the horses with a shout. Ingenti could be ablative, singular, masculine to describe clamore. Notice there that if ingenti is ablative, singular, masculine, it's the same declension as clamore, but because adjectives and nouns don't always have the same endings, they don't actually end up with an e, where it ends up with i to e. Omnes could describe equos and therefore must in the sentence because there's nothing else that it could. And finally, fidelis, well, that could actually be two answers because I'm a pain. Uxor could be nominative singular, sorry, uxor must be nominative singular feminine, and that for fidelis could describe it. But fidelis could be genitive singular masculine to describe mariti. So it could, in this case, be the faithful wife didn't give the name of the husband to the king, or the wife didn't give the name of her faithful husband to the king. The sentence kind of makes sense either way, so both of them are completely plausible, and both of them would be completely correct. The last major type of adjectives that we're going to discuss today are pronominal adjectives. That is to say, when pronouns are acting like adjectives. Uh, this is most common with the demonstrative pronouns hick and ille. Um, this or these and that or those. Um, this is actually, by the way, one of the only times that English bothers to do adjectival agreement, which is why it's this head, but these cute heads. So, last time for the interactivity, I promise. Here are some sentences. What do these pronominal adjectives describe in this sentence? Use the tables here. Three, two, one. If you are struggling, here are the sentences. Maybe it makes it easier to work out like what declension a noun might be, to work out what ending it should be having. Pausing again. Three, two, one. Okay, illos can only be on my table, accusative, plural, masculine, so it must be describing captivos. Notice that they actually do happen to have the same endings. The plural version of a lot of pronouns looks a lot more similar to a 212 or Kerberos type adjective. Huius, well, huius has to be some form of genitive singular, even if we don't know the gender, and in this particular case it's describing legionis, which is feminine. Hack must be ablative singular feminine, because it's the only time it comes up on the table, and so it must be describing the silver. Illud is got to be some form of neuter singular, and therefore describes flumen. And finally, hike could describe one of two things, because again, it's fun to play this trick. Hike could be describing the ankyla as nominative singular feminine, or it can be the neuter plural to describe werba. This is quite a common thing for hike or for illa over here. It's got a few different places in the table, so you need to work out both of the different things that it could be. Finally, finally, nominalized adjectives. In English, we sometimes use adjectives in a slightly weird way when you think about it. The English drink a lot of tea. I don't. I drink coffee. But there we are. The strong do what they want. This is a problem for the poor and I don't like difficult. These words are all obviously adjectives, but adjectives describe nouns. What are these adjectives describing in the sentence? The way that they're written implies that there is a hidden noun, like people or maybe men, women or things, depending on gender. So, English people, strong men. This is a problem for poor women. I don't like difficult things. Grammatically, though, we're treating these adjectives like nouns in the sentence. They therefore get called nominalized adjectives, that is to say, adjectives that have been made into nouns. Latin can do the same thing as English with nominalized adjectives. But because we can express the gender much more clearly by the adjectival ending, we can be, surprise, surprise, more specific than in English and add in man, woman or thing quite often as is appropriate. Thus, we can translate Bonnie as the good, praise the gods, or we can be specific and say good men, praise the gods. 
difficilia could just be boys don't like difficult or boys don't like difficult things for that neuter plural. Miserai could be the miserable or the miserable women because it's got to be feminine plural. This last one sentence here, ubi rex haec audiwit, is an example of a very common thing to see in Latin where haec is being used as these things, neuter plural. Try to avoid translating it as this because that's a bit vague and you might, if the examiner were feeling particularly mean, lose marks. Notice that it is slightly more common to see nominalized adjectives for the plural than for the singular. So in summary, Adjectival agreement is the process of matching an adjective to the noun that it describes. They might have the same ending as the noun that they describe, but they very often don't, so don't trust it. Adjectives can be split into Kerberos type adjectives, which have the endings of the second declension feminine, masculine, first declension feminine, and second declension neuter or Janus types with the two heads, which share their endings mostly with the third declension masculine or feminine or with the third declension neuter. The process by which adjectives actually agree is by making sure that they have the same case, the same number and the same gender as the noun that they describe. A lot of pronouns, particularly hic and ele, but a load of others, do the same thing of having the same case, the same number and the same gender. Finally, be wary of nominalized adjectives, which are adjectives pretending to be nouns. Um, because we can think about gender with Latin, we can ex insert words like men, women, or things to improve our English translation. Whew, that was a lot. Hope that helps. Thank you very much.